Hello, chess friends. This is International Master Valero Lewov, and welcome to um, today's uh, chess practice. Uh, what I like to do is uh, really cover one of the most interesting, one of the most exciting openings, personally, for me, and this is the bird. Now, a lot of people are not very familiar with it, and for this, I'd like to introduce you just something exciting that you can uh, really use in your day-to-day -day games, whether it's the club games that you play, tournaments, or actually online, which is usually what I recommend better before you start playing this more seriously. What I'm talking about is F4. So what is the initial idea of this opening? Well, as you could see, everything is about taking control of the center in a slightly different fashion. The pawn from F4 ultimately helps white to take out the square of E5 and prepares white a very interesting development, usually associated with further peace command into the center. Knight f3, b3, bishop b2. Now white can of course adopt different type of structures, e3, bishop d3, or oftentimes even g3 and bishop g2, which usually doesn't include the dark square bishop fianchetto. But either way, it's quite a bit different, and I'm always a great fan of applying structures or playing different formations that don't necessarily have, uh, you know, the same vibe as everything usual. So let's talk about it. The game I want to show you was actually played between Emine Lasker and Jay Bauer, and it serves as a great introduction, in my opinion, as to what you have to keep in mind. Now, this was uh, well annotated by a, a strong master in his book, actually, so that you wrote about this opening, but, uh, which which I'll you know recommend that you take a look at. So this was... Um, Actually, White White was playing it just with the pawn moves, with f4, e3, and then b3, so that the bishop came out on b2, and then bishop d3. So this is this is a great diagonal for both bishops. They are piled up on the king's side, and then we could see what this is all about. Let's just have those forces come right down and build. You see, it's really important to see that White shifted the order a little bit. And yet the main idea remained very much the same. It was all about let's line those pieces together and let's have them, you know, towards the Black King side. So just it's a great thing. So let's take a look and uh, see what happened. Bishop to d3, Black played b6. Knight f3. Okay. So what does white do? Pretty clear. He just wants to be on the king's side out there. So he just needs to set up the pieces and uh, make sure that he could use the square of e5 as the power to build, or actually to power the attack on the king. Whether it's going to be knight e5 plus queen f3 to h3, or whether it's going to be just the idea of playing g4, g5. You know? That doesn't matter so much. It's it's like let's just do it because once it's done, once the you know the delivery is made and the pieces just step in, we're going to have that immense peace control and tension that's basically required. So that's all that White really wanted. You know, you you got to start like that. The best way on how you start any opening is with the idea of, you know, on the base of regrouping. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, you start it by thinking, okay, where do I want to have my pieces and why do I want to have them there? Don't forget those questions. If you don't ask those questions, I don't really care how well you know the opening. It's likely not going to work as well. So, we need those questions so we can make things work okay that's necessary now black did bishop b7 why did knight c3 knight bd7 castles see no matter what opening you're playing any opening basically comes down to one thing and that is the concept of development 
Because when you get to develop your pieces or each of your pieces, you will know that you've got enough of a power so that you could power any type of attack or other stuff that you have ultimately decided to make. So it's not just about us taking on, you know, the right set of moves so we could see where you know our pieces can go. It's it's I get the development, I get the space, space is another key element. And as, as fast as I do it, whatever the structure, I will be in a good way to fight for advantage. Black Castle. And now white maneuvers. Now, maneuvering in the opening is tricky. Now, oftentimes, you don't want to be doing it. Because if you start up doing it, uh, the trouble is it will take you quite a, quite a lot of moves. And oftentimes, honestly, it's not leading up to great results when we do improvement, maneuvering, as opposed to just straight up development. But in this case, White had a very good, you know, hope for it because that knight was going for the G3. The king side attack is there. And also, in addition, just those pieces really seem to, you know, like to be in the proper areas. Now, if the position is a little more closed, Genuinely, you can allow yourself a bit more of those, you know, regrouping, you know, moves and everything. So, um, you know, you could give yourself a little bit more time. If the position is more open, you'd like to focus on the quick development. But if the position is a little more close, you do have the time to do it. Bird is no difference. Knight e2, c5. I think black should have played knight c5. And this was the move to, to, to challenge the bishop, which is really the reason why nowadays many people prefer to do the more quiet bishop e2. Then they said the knight on e5, and they played d3, knight d2 instead of this. Because this could eventually lead to that bishop being attacked, and then there's a problem. So anyway, black played c5, queen c7. Now you made a mistake, knight takes d5. Obviously, there was this urge to, to remove the powerful attacking knight by white. And that's why he exchanged it. But it was bad because it started the play on the king side, where actually white is moving, where he's playing along. And that was bad. On its own, the move or the sequence just uh, proved excellent for white to keep the attack on. Knight e5, knight xd5. Bishop takes e5, queen c6, queen e2. The thing I love about white's position here and the way it is played is that literally just every single force is, you know, into the play. We got that light square bishop. We've got a dark square bishop. We've got the knight ready to jump. We've got the, the queen closing in. Now, how long is it going to take until we actually do what we're going to do? Uh, you know, it depends. Mainly, it depends on our opponent. The great news is that there's no rush motive. All you need is to use the main advantage of the bird, which is you've got time to get ready. Not a whole lot of openings have that. I mean, okay, when you're white, it's a little easier. But even then, black is looking for counterplay or ways to equalize or develop fast. In here, you give yourself a little more time because of the closed nature of the position. And there is this natural flow that comes out on the king side. So black took on the h5. And now there was a great idea. I like you to think about it. There's a little hint that knight takes h5 was a huge mistake. And then came a brilliant, brilliant tactical sequence that completely bashed black hole for a structure apart so you can take a moment think a little bit about it and come up with your idea as to where or what do you think um you know white needs to do well everything was about forcing moose obviously and as such the move was pretty clear Bang. She makes h7. Just like, just like that, what you see is that suddenly, or all of a sudden, the black king is being completely destroyed. And what's so important is to see the area. 
Don't focus so much on the tactic, but focus on how white is able to do it. The kingside area right now is so weak for black. It is so vulnerable. It is so bad that literally this move completely bashes down whatever he was ready or preparing to do. Black takes, queen takes h, king g8, bishop takes g7, second one, completely and utterly destroying everything a black had in mind, you know, in terms of fighting chance. That was big, I can tell you that. It was really great, and it was really well well played, actually. So you see, on many occasions, you just need to think about it in that way. What do I need to do so that I can get my pieces on the area of the board? See, every opening structure gives you a chance to put your pieces and force them or have them on the area where they can do more. Right? So that's what we're getting here. What we're getting is the chance to get these pieces, to have them as close to the Black King side as we possibly could. And then there is the attack on the H7. Then there is the H5 that can come in. There is the serious tactic. Then basically King takes G7, Queen G4 it comes, King comes right back, Rook goes right through. Lasker's devastating point. He lifts the second attacker. And now look at this. The development is always about not so much what pieces do you have developed, but where do you have them developed. This is why I give such a high priority to the way and how pawns come together. Because when you have that, when you know that, the way and how the pawns are going to come together is going to determine where the pieces follow after. So after rook f3, obviously black tried a couple things, but then ultimately the game fails. White wins the piece takes the bishop, and then a couple moves after the game is over. I mean, this really, this game is a great introduction to an opening considered as pretty bad due to its fairly rare use on high-level games. But don't let that bother you. Remember, high-level players use high-level games because they are looking for specific type of positions. Unless you're playing on their level, you will need positions that can help you to get type of structure that is easy to follow and a clear plan. I don't suggest you only play that, but you could definitely use this to diversify your opening repertoire. It's an easy to follow, simple structure, and as long as you come up with the right ideas and you build on the king's side, you should be good to go. Now let's talk a little bit more about a few different ideas you can apply with this because it's, uh, it's always a good idea to just really see what type of uh, plans white can apply. So what we're going to see here is a um, a game that was played on a modern game because you're probably thinking, okay, Valeria, when you're showing me that's all these old games, why? I want to see masters. I want to see true 20th century masters, you know, late 20th century or so. Well, let's see a game that was actually played by Ben Larson. Ben Larson was one of the world championship contenders and he used to be one of the players who utilized the 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 bird as well as similar openings quite successfully in his games so we're going to see the, the game between the grandmasters ben larson and svetazar gligoric in the havana olympia 1966. So, by the way, for those of you who would like to, uh, for, for me to, to, to send them those games, just um, you can actually email me. Uh, it's Valeri, V-A-L-A-R-I. It's my name, Valeri.Lilov, L-I-L-O-V, at gmail.com, uh, you know, anytime during or after the, the class. And also, you can check the link below this video to see this unique course that's that's being presented by the, by the master uh, at an incredible discount. He covers a lot of these structures as, as well as others. And um, so let's get back to the game. Let's, let's see what really happened here. F4, okay, so uh, yeah, there's a very interesting comment from the book. This is actually by Grandmaster, uh, I mean, I'm not sure, he's definitely very experienced, Lakdawa, who wrote an incredible book on the bird. So black played knight of six, knight of three, d3, e3. And this is a different take on it. 
Okay, and this is definitely a, a little bit of a different take. White is developing his own pieces, a bit of a in in a bit of a you know you might even say strange way at first sight, but then you could sort of see why. It's it's all about speed, isn't it? All that White wants to do in this position is just forget the rest and focus his attention on King's side immediately. Now, is this justified? Probably not, you know, given that we're fighting, you're not fighting for the center right now, we're just relying on this blind side type of attack out there. It could be that it's not. But I do like the idea. Castle, b6, queen e1, bishop b7, knight d2. Now, this is interesting. The right idea is that white takes up the control now of the e5 square and f3, which uses, and this is super important for the bird, remember it, you've got to use the center as a cover under which you will be able to apply your pressure and all the buildup on the king's side. That means, so use your center as your cover. Make sure your forces coming down and attacking. This is this is key. If you just focus on, oh, let's attack on the king's side, it's not going to work. Not in this opening. Priority number one in the bird, as well as priority number one in many openings, actually. Not in just in the bird, but in particular when it comes down to the bird. Fight for the middle. So even though it looks like white is not fighting for the middle, he's actually fighting for it. You know, everybody realizes that middle is big. Middle is big. You got to fight for it. If you don't, your attack ain't going to work. So truth is, after knight d2 and queen g3, white is now actually both building up his pieces on the king side and setting up his control around the center, which looks really cute. So this is how we do it. This is how we go about it. All right. Well, Looks good. So far, so good. Okay, Black is considering in this position a number of different modes and ideas, I suppose. But what he decided to make uh, in that moment was just the idea of, okay, I'm going to just do set e6, preparing, you know, to play with queen e7 and get his pieces ahead. So he was good. Knight e5. Right down. This is it. See, Key point in these games or positions is you can't slow down or stay behind. You gotta go forth. You gotta you gotta go for it and you have to do it quickly. Very necessary thing is that you know you do this through a square like on e5, because beginning with this spot, we could see that the uh the buildup really trans translates into this. You know, white's able to think of moves like knight to f3, maybe even knight g5 can work. Um, you know, we have a, a number of, you know, nice ideas that will be piling up against black's position and, and his king eventually. So, did look like a good plan, indeed. Okay. All right, played knight e8, knight f3. See, it's really important because what you could find out is that the move of f6 as an idea is or feels like a challenge in this type of position. But, you know, the reality is that, you know, if black continues with the move of, uh, I mean, you can just come, come up with a move of, uh, um, you know, f6. And let's say black plays with, I mean, after knight to f3, then there is the move. And actually, see here, next thing, if we can play the move of queen to the h3. We're getting that queen along. We have that possibility to play it along with g4, maybe. You know, we can have bishop to the d2, uh, you know, king to the h1, rook f2, rook to g1, and then there is the move of g4, and we can control f5. But that would be perfect. So you just step in, use the pieces, and build. That's really great. Queen e7, knight g5. It's a very interesting thing that white is really, you know, going all that way because, you know, what you find is that 
it is about the build up and the command, but also it is really, uh, you know, instructive also to, to realize, not just uh, realize a good challenge or a good threat, but think about, you know, how the, how each and every one of those forces are coming together and I'm not talking about like, oh, well, look at those pieces. They're just nice and jumpy. <laughs> it's good to be jumpy, I guess, but you know, the reality is that all that white is looking for is a way to provoke a weakness. You got to know, it, it's not going to be there for you. Okay, If you're thinking about attacking the opponent, you got to work for it. And one of the best ways on how you do, you do this work is when you actually think about the chance to push him or make him to go down, create the weaknesses, and then you move around, you can take advantage. And that's what happened here. H6. I guess black should have played knight of six to at least uh, defend, but then after bishop d2, you could see why it's just building up and creating a lot of pressure there. So black played h6, knight of three, rook d8, bishop d2. Out of eight, a4. And this was a very interesting move that White picked up to do. You may be wondering right now as to, okay, why is it that this was played? Now, why, why did it have to be done? Um, and the truth is, it didn't. It certainly didn't have to be done. But the reason why it works all this greatly in this position is because it, it takes away b5. White can play bishop to the c3 without worrying about black challenging it. And little by little, there is going to be a lot of extra pressure and possibilities there. That's what you've got to do. Is it going to take some time? Yes, it will. I don't want to tell you things that are untrue. It will take some time. That's okay. Don't worry. You know what this is about. And so basically what's so exciting about that position is that, um, you know, in this moment, black played f6. I white played 9g4. See, so many moves were done just with the simple idea to provoke black to move. Damn, move on the on that king side because when you move, screw it up. F7 to F6 was a move that black did, and, and you just screwed up the whole king's position. And for this, white's not going to punish him. How? Isn't that the question of the day? Bishop c3. Here it goes. c5. Queen h4. And you see, the key now is really to get each and every one of white's pieces combined and attacking. Combined and attacking. Not, not attacking. Combined and attacking. If you don't combine them, they're not going to coordinate. See, coordination literally is when you have those forces really come down together and start the attack. This worked out great. And surely the idea is that now black has to worry. He played g5. Don't ask me why. I don't think that was a good move. But anyway, he decided to do it so that he could uh, probably push the queen around or over. Was it good? No. Whenever somebody moves or is forced to move on an area of the board which is not his, opponent's playing there, maybe he takes out one heavy lift off his back. But there's another piled up on another that comes on. So it's really just like he's trying to get off the, the heavy and you know two more come 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 on top of it. So F takes G, F takes G, Queen H5. It's it's more trouble now. See it's a very subtle opening. You can play it with the hope, okay, I'm gonna go after the black king set and I'm going to make him go down beautifully. It doesn't work like that. You have to be very focused. And you have to be very consistent with the way you build things up out there. 
The great news is that if you have that ability to really build it up and to make it work, it could work. It really could. So just you have to, you know, you have to make it. So stepping up in that position is uh, was was a great way for White to arrange this because now in case of the move d4, White just played bishop to the d2, d x to the e, bishop c3. Now we can see that if black exchanges, White's really going to take down the h6 most likely, and especially b x to c. This this is great. And you know it's already already White's fight. Black is just reacting to things. It's horrible. You know, when you start reacting, you just know um, I've messed up. You know, Black's reacting to everything that's coming into play. And then uh, as a result of this, rook to the d5, bishop takes g7, and then knight h4, we could see that, uh, you know, uh, we get that f line, we got that, that extra pressure against the f7. You know, we have that queen, and, uh, you know, just it's it's really good. And then g takes h, rook takes a7, taking knight f6, which was uh, super, really. It was super. That's basically it. You know, you can you can find out that right now in the in the end of the day, it's not just Black's King being horrible. It's Black's King being horrible and the rest of the piece is not going anywhere. Takes, obviously. White even played a five, which was very subtle. You can move the queen and it completely destroyed whatever was out there left for black to defend. See Going back to the earlier stage, see what made this game work is to actually realize what makes this opening tick. And it is a gradual yet focused development towards the center. It's not going to work if you don't do that. Is remember that the play in the middle is what makes it all happen. So it takes a lot of time build up and in a way preparation there's nothing wrong about that but when you actually apply the work it's going to pay off oh i guarantee you it is going to pay off so in this case white was very successful by ultimately building up the play towards the e5 squared and using that e5 for his knight so that the knight can just jump in and hold these squares so the rest of the squares can actually be around for the knight and the others to come. He did. Just continued. Not with threats. The threats were not possible for a while. But he did actually follow it up with moves that provoked certain weaknesses. They allowed the opponent to make certain bad ideas. And then when that happened, it was all for the better really was everything being on the king side was horrible and everything that white delivered on that side of the board was even more efficient so that you know once this just uh, once this jump and the sequence out there really worked out the tactics the exchanges the uh, you know the sequence of of checks or threats it was really really perfect and and again just like the major thing the main thing that you would want to know is that by uh, you know bringing your pieces in such a way by you know getting them on the right line or and all right ahead uh, you achieve one of the most important things learning to be focused whatever you do you have to learn okay I've got an area where I want to be focused and I want to be able to build on that and you know, to play on that now, uh, I want to show you one more game, actually. Before that, I just wanted to tell you once again, don't forget to check the link below this video. It provides a lot of concepts about it that reflect these structures and more for an incredible discount just for a few hours for the time of the, you know, the duration of this uh, lecture and maybe a little bit more, but it's going to be gone soon, so please check it out. And if you guys want me to send you some of these games, don't forget to send me an email message or message me just from my website which is tigerlevelup.com uh, so i could send you over these games with the annotations so anyway this next game we're going to see was played between uh villa rodriguez and stamenkovic to come um, this is a pretty modern game and what white did is adopted the so-called leningrad approach 
those few pawns are ultimately a great pawn chain that builds up towards the idea of e5. Now, why is that good? Well, it's good because if a move like e5 happens, if it is done, then literally all the white pieces are going to step in, attack, and shoot. It's really right. Castle, e4. e dix to e4, d dix to e4. And now you understand one very important thing. If white's pawn reaches out for the square of e5, not talking about just him being able to stay well. We're going to realize the big idea here. And the big idea is that, number one, we're going to push black down. And number two, we're going to have his bishop blocked as well as a huge amount of space being created in almost zero amount of time. That's how good it gets. That's how it's supposed to be. And um, take a look at this. See, right after that move, DDXD Black actually did something smart. He played e5. He didn't he didn't want to let this uh, you know e5 happen. It's just he wanted to stop this. And he was right. Why not? Let's just hold that off and then prevent anything dangerous from even coming in together. So what the hell is white supposed to do now? The right idea is that when black plays e5, which is ge genuinely speaking the most efficient way on how he can play it, but when he actually goes on to play that type of move, the right plan is that we just go with knight c3, pretty well played, and then after the move of knight to the c3, right after, like the bishop e6, f5. The f5 move is literally the one that just is absolutely excellent and amazing and that was just the move that uh, comes up you know you know as quickly as we want it uh it gives us the ability to break through open up and attack and okay what's what's likely going to happen in the next move well uh, i think the real issue in this position is going to be mostly the fact that uh, none of the black pieces can really you know um come next to the king's side and defend. So all the, you know, all for the better. Obviously, after the GDX, after the bishop c4, I mean, he didn't play GDX f5 because that often leads to a very special move by white. I'm talking about the move of um, bishop to the g5. And then when this would have uh, happened, you know, now you could sort of realize, okay, that's scary. It's just, it's just bad. You know, it's honestly, this is not going to go well. We've got the attack happening versus the F6. We've got the, the hits on the other side of the board. It is scary, just whatever we speak of it. So um, that was very interesting, you know, in a sense. That was really, really cool. And so what, what happens is that, I mean, obviously, Black would have to either lose the knight on F6, which is horrible, or knight H4 plus knight F5 is going to happen. So that's uh, that would have been uh, horrible to experience. And then, uh, obviously, just going back, that's why Black didn't even want to play that. He played this, knight C3. Actually, let me see. The, this is the game we're actually going on. F5. He want, he played the bishop to c4, and he wanted to make some counter play. But now you see that it's a very narrow corridor. Black's pieces simply can't move all that well or all that easily through this. Why? Because if he's to do it, he's got to find a way to just make these pieces possibly you know, come around and then do more. But... It can't. See, so that's where it just gets bad. It's not that it's impossible, but it just gets very difficult, you know, so that for him to, to make this work. Now, when white plays root to the d2, there is definitely going to be the idea of playing alongside with h3. And there's going to be more. It's just for now, that's what we like to do. Just take the chance. And, uh, you know, just, just build it 
build it up. So after that, queen a5, h3, black did knight to the f6, g4, strategic threat of g5 now coming in. Perfect. So black's got enough enough to worry about in this position. He did go for uh, h6, rook f2. And you see, again, very similar to the previous two games that we saw. The plan really is, I'm not focusing so much on the theory. Theory you can very easily get. But what I'm actually talking about is the way on how white is able to really build everything towards the idea of attacking on the king side. And it works. Why? Because it is supposed to take a little bit of time. It is supposed to be a little bit, you know, probably a little heavy even. But in the end of the day, nothing to worry about. We are going to make things as good as they should be. So this is a very good move. Rook F2, Rook A, A, B, E, A, and then Knight D2. What was very important is that Black is just focusing on the wrong side of the board. Well, we're not. It's really interesting. So Black's focusing on the wrong side. We're not. We're pushing him back. Exchange. And then this move is super critical. Now, I want you to remember why this is played. The reason why this move was actually done by White was because by doing this, we take away the square of d4 so that he can't move up with his knight anywhere. So this move usually takes out the two key vital squares when Black can actually activate his pieces or attack us through. And if he's not able to do any of that through any of those, there is no reason why you got to be uh, extremely, you know, worried or careful. So that is um, that was a very good thing. And just actually after that move of c3 here, I b3, bishop f1. You see why it took all this time to kind of push black down. You got to be careful with that because you don't want to take too much time for this. But you know, white nevertheless took the time to do it, and then as he did, he then progressed very effectively, very well, to attack on this side of the board. So there was the move of pawn up there, which is pretty great. H takes G, bishop takes G, G takes F, rook takes F, check, bishop B3, white's knight came right down. You could see that, in a sense, this is all, we, all we're doing in the position. So there is another extra problem. It was it was quite exciting just the way on how everything seems to work out for White because he is securing himself. He protects the structure. He knows that he j it takes quite a bit to build it up and, and get it ready. But once it is there, things are just going to flow with G5 h4 it's a combination of building up or getting more pieces and getting more lines see pawns help mostly because they open up the lines it's really the amount of pieces that helps white to deliver these key threats i think the c4 now was just like okay well we took away the bishop we exposed the black king and then we we're able to i mean destroy so i took it bishop takes c now you're probably wondering why didn't black play rook g8 well, that was knight takes d5. Why didn't he move his king down to h8? He could have, but e5 would have fallen. It's, it's, probably it was better, but bishop d4 now looks like a killer. It's, it's just that black's pieces are constantly struggling, and this allows why this incredible flexibility that in one way or another simply leads to devastation. Here, takes, queen goes, bishop g2. Activating the final piece, and then now, uh, you know, obviously. So, if you look more to the earlier position that we talked about, to the earlier, 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 would you like to see again just that maneuver? I always say that e4 is the most important move we got to do in this opening, and there's a good reason for it. Okay, the reason for it is because if you don't make that kind of move happen, you're not going to have the possibility to be successful or attacking. So this is what you need to do. 
when you come up with that type of move, you will be able to uh, you know, just create some threats and make different type of tactics. E4 creates the base, and we further build on that by pushing over on the king's side or doing different type of things uh, on this or that area of the board. It was really well played by White, but what I believe created the most impact in the position was how he was able to combine and connect, relate to his pieces, and have them come together so that they can create, create and utilize that pressure. It was good. So I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. Again, don't forget to check the link below this video if you want to see uh, the incredible course with many different structures and um, like quite a few of these lines and plans. So um, do that. And then, of course, if you want to see any of those games or just ask me some questions about the structure or, or else, just give me a message. Send me a text over from my website, tigerlove.com, or you can just email me any, any queries that you have. Thank you so much, and I'll speak to you next time.